roguelite, permadeath, class system, cyberpunk, shooter, a third person one in this case. Many of the overused tropes and keywords of our days are to be found in Ark Runner, but it's also a vibrant and action packed title that seemed worthy of our attention. Welcome to the Xbox Era review for Ark Runner. After the most generic of premises of a rogue AI wreaking havoc and us being the only folks who can stop this madness, it's not long before we're thrown into a cyberpunk city where we can walk through the first corridor-esque neon lit streets with a handy tutorial to get the basics of Arc Runner. And those are certainly sound, a competently made third person shooter module with dashes, various abilities and a weapon with unlimited ammo, though one where the magazine has to be reloaded from time to time. The movement itself isn't the fastest, though the feeling of velocity can be largely increased by cranking up the FOV, but the shooting feels satisfying for the most part, even though it lacks any aim assist on a controller. The premise in these early streets is simple. Enemies of various kinds, ranging from little flying drones to humanoid robots with melee or ranged weaponry, will be spawning for a few waves before the door opens up and we can go on. Nothing we haven't seen before a thousand times already. There isn't a lot of room to manoeuvre with a handful of extra staircases and hidden corners offering loot in the form of different weapons or tools. Weapons can be many kinds, pistols, assault rifles, snipers, even heavier weapons like grenade launchers or a crazy addictive disc launcher throwing projectiles that keep bouncing around on the map for a while, creating a beautiful and violent dance in its wake. That and the shrapnel gun, which is a glorified shotgun, have been my main allies in many runs. As for the tools, these are cooldown based abilities that go from simple grenades and stun traps all the way down to decoys to confuse your AI foes, auto fire turrets and more. As the levels progress, these tools don't really get stronger, whereas higher numbers and extra perks can be found on further guns that crates and enemies litter the areas with. The roguelite aspects of Arc Runner come in many forms. One is how the levels are randomly generated based on tiles, though the architecture variety is quite low. Levels end with a selection of augmentations that players can add to their various limbs, adding all kinds of extra abilities and perks, such as armor getting partially recharged at the end of each area, damage bonuses whilst using a certain skill, or improvements to the effectiveness of the various types of elemental damage. There's even additional jumps and jetpacks that can be used, making the combat more dynamic and vertical. Naturally, permadeath plays a part too, and you should be particularly wary of it. Sure, players can unlock all sorts of useful permanent unlocks after the runs, increasing their individual stats, gaining additional abilities, or even a second weapon slot. However, there aren't any checkpoints or starting points. Each of the game's various biomes offers multiple levels that have to be beaten in a row, and players can't just restart after a boss either. It's back to square one, every single time. This can be a bit infuriating on more advanced runs as the early areas become easier after powering up, but they can still take a good chunk of time to complete. At least our most used weapons, after a certain amount of kills, become permanently selectable in the armory, allowing us to begin each run with our favourite tools of destruction. It is this grind and repetition that is ultimately the game's biggest flaw in my eyes. The combat is fun enough, though not as exhilarating as something like Arcade Geddon, though the generally tight level designs and relatively low player speed don't quite allow for higher octane manoeuvring. Instead, it often boils down to running around in circles or using a few key elements of scenery to hide behind and abuse the wonky enemy AI. Though watch out for what you use cover for, as various elements can be destroyed and go with a large bang that damages everybody, you included, when it does. As the stages go on, a lot of the enemies start having large shield pulls to wear down or wield very hard to avoid projectiles, and in some cases are even protected by a different enemy that needs to be killed first. The sheer number of foes in some arenas makes these repetitive combat encounters go long in the tooth. At least the levels do shake up the formula a little bit from time to time, offering different objectives like defending terminals or destroying turrets instead of the regular wave of enemies. 
Likewise, the occasional short alternate route often offers challenges, ranging from beating a certain number of enemies in a limited time frame while in the air, using multi-kills, and so on. The reward in this case is usually a choice between healing up or points to spend after death on a cool weapon. In terms of visuals, the game finds a smart compromise between not particularly detailed and intentionally quite blocky 3D models, which are certainly light on the powerful Xbox Series X we tested the game on, while using much of the computing power on blinding lights, shiny surfaces that seemingly do ray tracing very well, all while keeping a rock steady 60fps, even when playing at higher fields of view. Enemies themselves aren't always the most readable, though players can unlock various skills to make them visible, displayed through walls as red outlines, with their projectiles even shown on the screen at all times with a handy radar. The issue is therefore at least partly sidestepped. A quick mention to the game's electronic soundtrack, which, whilst hardly really standing out, does get the cyberpunk AI theme going with some nice beats. So what's the content outlook here? Players, either alone or with the help of a friend in local play, can get through the many levels it takes to beat the story on multiple difficulties and with all kinds of classes, ranging from assault, ninja, hacker and more. It's unlikely that a player manages to reach the end credits on first try, meaning there's some longevity in here, but the limited variety of the combat scenarios and level design hampers the desire of replaying it all, especially when the rewards for doing so are weapon unlocks, extra skills and whatnot for challenges we've already played through anyway. Still, do expect at least 10 or so good fun hours of Ark Runner. Anything beyond that depends upon how much you like this adrenaline fueled grind. I'd like to say something more original or outstanding about Ark Runner, but in so many ways it's as generic of a cyberpunk third person roguelike shooter as it gets. Solid visuals, a decent soundtrack, enjoyable but not outstanding gameplay, though impacted by a low variety that becomes evident when grinding through near identical scenarios one after another. And yet, I had a great time with this game with tight difficulty and risk versus reward gameplay, making it an enjoyable way to pass a couple of evenings in this relatively unexciting April of new releases. If you need some mindless action that plays and looks pretty good, do keep an eye out for this one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and why not ring that notification bell so that we can let you know when we've got some fresh Xbox content. And we'll see you next time.